Welcome once again to Noir Alley. I'm your host, Eddie Muller. This week's film is a lesser-known noir on the resume of one of Hollywood's biggest stars, Burt Lancaster, and it features one of the most provocative titles of any film in the classic era, Kiss the Blood Off My Hands, released by Universal in 1948. You might expect it to be a horror film if it didn't co-star one of the classiest actresses of the day, Joan Fontaine. The story concerns an American GI still in England at the end of World War II, suffering from what would later be called post-traumatic stress disorder. The violence of the war has seeped into his bloodstream, making him a loaded gun waiting to be triggered. Fontaine plays a lonely woman he unexpectedly encounters who tries to save him from the dark side. Although the movie was made in 1948, the source novel was published before the war in 1940. It was a bestseller in the UK, earning its first-time author, Gerald Butler, comparisons with American hard-boiled writers, especially James M. Cain. That's because the book's protagonist, like the men in Postman Always Rings Twice and Double Indemnity, was no hero. The character of Bill Saunders was bitter, brooding, and violent, without the excuse of being made that way by the horrors of war. Eagle Lion Pictures in the UK bought the rights, intending to film it with Robert Donat in the lead. But by 1947, the picture was still in limbo. Meanwhile, Burt Lancaster hit Hollywood like a beefcake bomb. His single New York stage role, A Sound of Hunting, ran for only 23 shows. But in those few weeks, he was deluged with movie offers. Neophyte agent Harold Hecht was a small timer among the suitors, but he cadged Lancaster by promising he'd always be his most important client, and together their ultimate goal would be to produce their own movies. And that is precisely what happened. In between making hits like The Killers and Brute Force for producer Mark Hellinger and Desert Fury and Sorry Wrong Number for Hal Wallace, Lancaster finagled the film rights to Kiss the Blood Off My Hands, which had been published in the United States in 1946. It would become the first film from Hecht and Lancaster's Norma Productions, named for the actor's wife. They'd been married only six months, but Norma Marie Anderson was already a smart and savvy comrade. She encouraged her husband to pursue independent projects, saying he should make, quote, one movie for the bank and one for the art. Universal International agreed to give Norma Productions a $1 million budget and use of the studio lot in exchange for Lancaster appearing in its film version of Arthur Miller's All My Sons. Use of the studio was essential since the story required construction of a 20-block section of London, something that would have been impossible during the mandated budget constraints of the war. For his first film as a producer, Lancaster wanted to reunite with director Robert Siadmak, who had directed his breakout hit, The Killers, in 1946. But schedules didn't align, and the job went instead to actor-turned-director Norman Foster. A protege of Orson Welles, Foster had only recently returned to America from Mexico, where he'd spent the past several years making movies, several starring his discovery, Ricardo Montalban. Foster had a Wells-like vision for this film, and he chose Greg Toland, cameraman on Citizen Kane, to work his visual magic. Well, the magic went up in smoke after a week of filming, and Toland was replaced by another Wells collaborator, Russell Meddy, whose images are saturated in the noir vibe so prevalent at the time. Now, virtually every English expat in Hollywood was hired to fill out the cast, and the most crucial player was imported from England to make his first Hollywood film. Robert Newton rings everything out of the role of Harry Carter, the black marketeer who is the villain of the piece. And if all that hasn't gotten your pump primed, rest assured that, as in virtually all his early films, Lancaster will lose his shirt at one point, and the beefcake will be on full display. From 1948, featuring a typically terrific score by Miklos Roja, here is Kiss the Blood Off My Hands. <laughs> 